So we're here for winter time, and uh, there it's, I'm reminded of the story of the two squirrels. The squirrel that spent the summer gathering his nuts, and the squirrel who spent the summer uh, just busting nuts. Yo dudes, welcome to my winterization video, which has taken me quite a long time, whoa, quite a long time to put out. But uh, one, it's been like 70 degrees here after I finished my winterization stuff, so I couldn't really put it to the test. So what this is, is a tutorial on how to winterize your RV for the winter from a man who's never done it before and or basically just going through about four days of winter with this program and uh, so far so good um, I got a it's a two-part process there's the upstairs and then the downstairs upstairs first we did a few things we foiled the windows your coldness has been foiled windows um, we foiled the windows hello uh, now we're in the boudoir or some people call it the uh, uh, Costco butcher shop because uh, they give the best meat and it comes in bulk but this is my bedroom and uh, the reason I bring you into here is I want to show you I installed some of this before oh yeah there's these real thin windows not very nice looking but I got some of that and for last night it made a huge difference normally it is freezing cold so all you basically have is one single pane of glass. Basically, it's like plexiglass because the back's safety. And this comes in and out if I do want light. But it made a huge difference. One, for uh, these, you touch them and the blinds would be freezing, and now they're relatively warm. And it keeps some of the light out so I could sleep all day long if I wanted to. And then wake up and... Uh, uh, drink and then just go right back to sleep um, no but yeah so those helped also I'll show you another thing I got it's a heated mattress pad it's basically a human tank warmer and if these weren't AC and 110 and take up a good bit of electricity uh, I think it would be, if you're plugged in this isn't this is just a Luke guess or a Luke maybe tip it's way heater or way cheaper than a regular RV tank heater. If you could afford, uh, if you're gonna be plugged in the whole time, I would just get a Walmart heated mattress thing instead of the fancy 12 volt uh, tank heaters. If you're gonna be plugged in the whole time, that's just a maybe. Maybe that's a bad idea, but I feel like that'd be fine. And it's his and hers too. set your own temperature what do you want maybe I run hot maybe she runs cold maybe two steps backwards uh, and opposites attract and you, that's an old Paula Abdul song that I miss I have my factory heater which is runs off the propane and battery I had installed a secondary 30 gallon propane tank totally un, I'm off the grid and off the grid that's double off the grid because I'm off the grid, then also off that grid with another thing. And installed is a 330,000 BTU Mr. Buddy heater. He's my good buddy. If you pan down for a second, what you can see right now is uh, it's actually uh, toasting my balls as we speak. My balls are on fire. So, good old heater there. Alright, I'm going to make this the, the secondary propane tank. And... I know propane's not something you play with. I usually typically don't advocate learning what you're doing first. But in this case, it's pretty much a straight shot, one hose to the other. And the buddy heater comes with its own hookup. There's no doing like fittings and all that kind of shit. 
But a little disclaimer, never hooking up propane. Just take a little like spray bottle with soapy water and spray it all when it's all running. And if you see little bubbles, you gotta leak. If you don't, then you don't. So I'm gonna run this guy in here. Uh, later I'm gonna come through and put like a little strap that's got a clip on it and snap can unsnap. Cause now every time I go take it to get it refilled, I'm gonna have to unscrew it to get it out. However, I like the peace of mind of knowing that it's secure. So gotta make trade-offs in life. pretty straightforward and I put a little strap on it and ran it up and under and I'll show you where that is. Tight like a tiger. Hold on, let's see me get up like a robot. Alright, and under here I just put a, uh, I just screwed a velcro strap in so that way I can tuck away the hose that I need to. And then for easy stowing. All weather, baby. Mr. Buddy, my good buddy, I put it on a tile. Doesn't necessarily need to be on it. But uh, I want to show you something real quick. A couple, well, a couple things. If you get one of these heaters, which I do highly recommend, uh, this is about $120. It can come with a fan, but I will say you do not need a fan because you put this thing on high and your ass is cooking. And, uh, Alright, so yeah, it don't need this. This is still cold, it doesn't get hot, but I want to show you a cool feature. It safety safely shuts off no matter what. And there's no no propane coming out. So if you were to bump this on a bitch, it will turn off for you. Pretty easy to start. You got a little igniter, hit the pilot, and then you pump it up. Yeah and you are frying this thing. But yeah, again, it's propane. So what you have to do is crack the windows a little bit. And the reason I got this guy is because my furnace, which does the job, sort of, but it also sounds like all kinds of hell when you turn it on. But also, it runs off the battery as well as propane, so it kind of kills the battery. But the only, thing, my only, the only downside to this, aside from the crack the windows a little bit. I glossed over that part and I shouldn't have. When running any sort of propane heater, or anything that burns like that, you'll need to crack the window a little bit because it requires oxygen in order to burn. If you do not have the windows cracked, it will use the oxygen within the RV, leaving you without oxygen and probably dead. So that's an important thing. You want to have a little bit of air coming into, I know it sounds counterintuitive as it's winter time, but have a little bit of air coming in for your propane heater and you'll be Snug as a bug and not dead, which is always nice. Aside from the crack the windows a little bit, is there's no thermostat on it. It'd be nice if it shut off at a certain temperature, other than just waking up just sweating your balls off. However, it's economical. They said on a 20 gallon tank, you can run this nonstop for 30 hours. I got a 30 gallon tank, so uh, I can run it for more than 30 hours. For 10 gallons more, uh, put the that's one gallon over ten per hour BTU hold the X uh, half the X squared equals longer than thirty hours so that I got this going for me and the other thing upstairs is uh, my goal is to go totally off the grid throughout the winter and I don't think that's a reality for me but I'm getting closer I'm getting closer because I got I don't have the power quite yet to sustain my, I got an Eden Pure, which I'm occasionally when I plug in, electric heater, I'll plug in. I can run it off my inverter for about three, maybe four hours. However, I shouldn't do that when it's below freezing. Moving swiftly on to downstairs. Downstairs, uh, I put heat tape, insulation, tank warmer, light bulb heater situation and they all run with a pretty janky way with an electrical cord plugged into my inverter all right here's the water pump uh water tank region of the rv and uh, i'm gonna try to wrap these up and insulate this and keep this as warm as possible first to do that i'm gonna i want to be able to get underneath it to be able to put a piece of that foil back insulation 
that Reflectex Blue Tang reflect your reflex. So once I get that done, then I can do the other shits. Sorry for the road noise. It's there because I'm next to the road. But what I got for this job, not for fixing the leak, that's something else. I'm gonna use aluminum foil. Damn, it's so loud. Uh, and wrap all these pipes. They're PVC, which is good for this application. Uh, Cause they're gonna be wiggling and jiggling around a lot cause you're driving. But the reason, and this is just, it's one dollar for 25 feet. You wanna wrap all the pipes that you're gonna put the heat wrap on because the aluminum or aluminium, depending on where you're from, uh, will actually help spread the electricity around it. But this is a, I'm going to go over and above maybe what I, what I need to do, but just in case, and it might still fail. If I get prolonged below zero temperatures, and maybe I'm away or something like that, then I can't be out here running the battery for it, but I'm gonna lay this down on the bottom, wrap foil around my pipes, heat tape on the pipes, put another one of these on top of it, tape down, and then putting that light bulb in there, and hopefully that should take care of this section, and I'll do the same if I can get my fat ass back in that tiny hole and get all those pipes in there, then take care of those in there. All right, this probably looks like insanity, heat tape insanity. The shittest plumbing-based horror film. Uh, all right, okay. So what you can see, I took the heat tape, I zip tied it down, I'm gonna take some electrical tape, put it on it, and then I gotta get some, uh, then I got some pipe insulation. I went ahead and I wrapped it totally around the water pump. Usually with water pumps, water doesn't necessarily go in that back section, but some can get in there. Uh, so yeah. That hopefully will take care of this section. This doesn't have any on it because this is a, the drain for the tank, so that's going to be closed. So that's not going to have water going through it anyway. So, yeah, there's that. One of the things that makes America such a great country is uh, the options in pipe insulation that we have. So many. Show me another country that has more options when it comes to insulating pipes in the United States of America. And I will show you a paper that says you're lying. Uh, anyway, so I got two. This is the pipe wrap, the fiberglass based. This is it's good for wrapping, uh, especially on uh, sanitary lines. I'm gonna use this more in the gray water, black water tank area. And this I'm gonna cut to fit. This sort of just wraps around. And you got this little double stick and you peel it off and then it together. Uh, when I was a kid I had one of these, a bigger one, because um, you might not be able to tell, but my penis, it hangs down the bottom of my pants leg and I just usually wrap it in the winter time with one of these guys. I don't, I don't glue it shut, I just lay it around it so it stays warm. I'm wrapping it in pipe insulation. You want to keep all your joints totally as tight as possible. They sell these stupid uh, 45s and whatever corner piece is there, but if you're too stupid to figure out how to cut a 45 with a pair of scissors, then that's on you. You can spend two dollars for every corner there is. Um, yeah, so you want to get them as tight as possible. Any place where they're not tight, you're going to be losing heat out of. And this doesn't necessarily get that hot. It just keeps it above above freezing. So you want it as secure as possible. And these I got at little caps for. And then we'll wrap it and sandwich it again and some more of this over the top of the entire thing. I went ahead and I put that uh, Reflectix on the outside door. It's not pretty, but that will trap in some of the heat. I got more insulating to do. I'm still waiting on my tank heater. It's supposed to be here today, but it's not. Once it is, I can take this tank out, drain it, take it out, put the tank heater underneath it. Once I get it open, I can get a better look in there and try to maybe find a way to better insulate the inside of this but I'll just show you again what I'm up against here this comes in to here this being a water pipe and here being the next bay over so if you walk around the back hey bicycle 
and then we come over here I'd use this pole to be able to I just shoved all the heat tape down in there but if you look way back in here in order to be able to get this heat tape tight against because I want it to go individually on each pipe right up against it because it's not doesn't get very hot at best it's like 40 degrees or just enough to be above freezing however what I'll probably do is try to get that as tight against there as possible get a heater in there and then shove it full of bad insulation to kind of trap in the heat all right this isn't pretty but I'm gonna show you what I got I'm gonna tape all this down as best I can in theory there should be no liquid in here uh, or at least be sitting in there because it'll drain out and then I'll shut these. I'm going to wrap these real tight with that bat insulation. Well first I got, okay I got the heat tape as much as I can weaved around onto every surface wrapping out the pipes. This is going to come up higher and wrap around this scissor valve all the way to the tank itself back up around trying to hit every pipe. This one I'm going to wrap the outside with well first I'm going to tape it down wrap everything with the aluminum foil to kind of heat trap the heat in a little bit tape it all the way up to the uh, valve itself because liquid does get inside of here a little bit and this could freeze and then wrap it in the insulation and then in here i will run an outlet or run a plug to the inverter for both this and my light here i do need to set something up so it doesn't because you've got the bulb and it's kind of wiggle jiggle to it I don't want this heat lamp to smash every time I hit a bump, so I gotta be keep changing bulbs. They're about four dollars a bulb. And I'm gonna put that on a switch on the inside so when my thermostat goes off, I can just hit this switch and it should keep this heated up. In order to get this tank heater on, I gotta pull this tank out. I want to put the tank heater underneath it and wrap this thing in foil. I uh, got these wires disconnected. First I tried to take this thing out, but that thing is not moving. Uh, this is getting loosened up pretty easy. The airline is out, but this guy doesn't want to go. And I'm trying to do this to where I don't... Something about plastic that's been stuck together since uh, the 80s. In order to disconnect that, I got the old patented Luke hammer and pry bar combination. And what you do is you put it there, gives you a little bit of extra pry on there. Yeah. All right, we're disconnected. Occasionally, my brain wakes up and a little alarm goes off and says, Luke, you're about to do something stupid. Um, before I pull this out, because you see how small this little fitting is, and how this one is very important that this lines up correctly, and this is a big tank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and mark it in several spots, so that way when I slide this tank back in, I know I'm in the correct location, so I can get back to that very small fitting so I know it'll line up right and I won't have to play hell trying to get that thing to uh, go back together. So mark there, mark there. You can see it on the black side but yeah as long as those line back up uh, my fitting should line up. This is fun. The uh, tank itself will not fit out of this hole, so I have to take this whole uh, whole piece of shit here off, I guess, to get it out. Okay, important part of doing any project is knowing when to say fuck that. And uh, if you look up underneath here, the angle iron connecting this is back screwed from the top. Not only would I have to take the uh, body work off, but then try to somehow get inside the wall, either that or cut that angle off, I'm not really sure what that is doing holding this on. Basically I don't want to do it, so I'm going to put that heat pad underneath there, shove as much bad insulation around the top and back in the side, 
and then uh, start going to church and maybe hopefully uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will help me out. Alright, since I can't get that uh, tank out, that ain't happening, uh, and all I have, my tank warmer is this big, and they said I would need two of these for 30 gallon tank, which is what I have. Um, they're $75 a piece. But I know that's a, I'm already blowing my load on money wise, so I'm gonna try to stretch what I got. And uh, again, might be my naive, but I'm gonna put this on here, put tin foil on top of it, tape it down real well, slide that underneath the tank, and my hope is that the foil will distribute the heat a little better throughout the whole thing. Shove bad insulation on top and then around it, and all it. You don't need to keep it. You're not trying to boil water. You're just trying to keep it above freezing. That's the main thing you're trying to do. And my hope is that I'll be able to do that with this. So, we'll see. Okay, again, possibly naive, but uh, I'm trying to extend the power of this tank warmer. Tank warmer is going to sit here. I'm going to put it in the corner right where all the fittings and everything are going to be. And I got this foil on top of it, so hopefully that will spread the heat out. And this one's on top of this one, this one on top of that, so the heat maybe will go underneath it. Wrapped in insulation, hopefully that'll get us. Okay, uh, heat lamp, like you'd see in like a chicken farm. So I can find a way to secure one of these in each one. And this is where the DC and AC thing comes in. I don't know where the hell the bag went, but I got a little switch. My thinking, and people can freak out if they want to, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this cord. I got a switch and an inline fuse, like an automotive fuse. And uh, I went with a 20 amp, because something about this said 20 amps. I don't know. So yeah. My plan is to just insulate the shit out of the bottom. But for right now, I want to do a test that my... Without hooking it up, I'm going to split this cable, hook it straight to the battery. And see if it works. And if it works... We might have ourselves a DC straight to uh, whatever dealy majig. So it wasn't on the to-do list, but while I was down here, I decided to actually properly vent this. Uh, deep cycle uh, batteries like this, they give off fumes, and they should even when I open this, you can kind of smell it. And that's something I should have done a while back. But yeah, so, so I cut in a little vent there. I don't know why I put the register on there. A mouse could slide right through that thing, but it makes me feel better, and it looks pretty. And then I screwed this piece of angle down here, just to keep them from sliding out. This kept them in place a little bit, but occasionally they'd move around. So that'll keep them from going back and forth this way, the strap. I should have a little metal strap. I got some of these metal hook deals, but they were too short, so eventually I'll do that. Getting closer, getting closer, folks. And uh, again, I'll just store all my antifreeze here, and I'll have enough for each time I go dump out my poo-poo. I can fill it up with a thing of antifreeze. So, yeah. And it's good I keep, uh, I always try to keep enough oil with it. I don't know. Again, you'll probably look this up if you go. Might be some information that you could use. Some old timer. If I see gray hair on a mechanic's head, I assume he's been around for a while and knows what he's talking about. I uh, suggested this type of oil for uh, uh, the 454. So, maybe that'll be useful to you too. Alright, for the DC stuff, the two little heaters and the uh, tank warmer, I got this little switchy switch to break up the, I uh, don't know where I'm going to put it yet, because I don't want to run that thing I learned about the old, with the Nikola Tesla, Thomas Edison thing, is alternating currents better for distances, pew 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 pew, because it's sending the signal back and forth, but direct current is direct, so you don't want that line to run too long, you'll have a little drop and power over a certain amount of time. And I also got this little fuse case from the old AutoZone. The tank warmer is 
10 amp and then the little heaters are 15 so I went 15 I think that should be all right and you just run this on in, in line with it you drop a little fuse in there just a regular automotive fuse pretty handy little thing it's so firm so watertight so yeah let me figure out I might just put this in the bathroom somewhere I don't know somewhere I just like flipping that switch look at that all systems go sir boom it's a strong masculine switch you hear that now listen boom pow look at that yes all right this is a huge pain in the ass but let's see if it works I'm gonna switch this to the off position for now come around the back here switch this other one to the off position I'll tidy up all these wires when I'm done uh, I gotta clean this up went down around through here had to crawl around behind all these and uh, I just ran through my nice new register and here's my I wanted it inside but then again I didn't want to run my wires too far it's not a huge deal walk out here and do it let me drop a fuse in here and we'll see if it works all right we're fused Power's on. Everybody hold your breath. Oh, shit. Let's see if we blow a fuse if I turn them both on. Another one's running. Let's see if this thing gets hot. I'm gonna wait for it to go for a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. Who's the fucking diesel? Oh, that's smoking. That's not good. It's brand new. Let's hope it just. It smells like it's burning up. It's not good. Also. They seem to run whether the switch is on or off. Just leave that here for a second. Switch off. Okay, switch is off. Running. And as I've scrapped the DC plan, uh, just for all AC at the moment, I like now that I have this switch that just does nothing down here. And not that I would ever be able to resell this thing, at least for the amount of money I put in for it. Uh, I'm with this guy till death. Till death do his part, baby. But I like now, if I did, somebody would be like, what's this switch? Honey, is this, is it anything on? What's happening? Huh? What about now? Now? Now, anything? Huh? What's happening? Maybe the battery's turning off? Is it the lights? Huh? Is the, is the water still running? Is the hot water, is the pump still running? Alright bros, it runs from out here, right there, over, down, and around, and to here, to a power strip that is secured in the ceiling. This, I'm going to get these cords out of the way a little better. This guy will bubble wrap down, heat tape, insulated to this point where there's no heat. I got some heat tape. That's only just secured there. I don't think that's going to heat up anything, but uh, I got the insulation tucked in, so we're only dealing with this small area. This has heat tape. It's got uh, aluminum foil on it, reflectix on it. This, I put this uh, pad around so when we're wiggling, jiggling down the road, to worry about it bouncing so I'm gonna add a little more to that and then tape that up I'm gonna get a lighter light bulb or bulb because I don't think that that heat bulb might be too much and I don't want to start a fire down here but that cord runs straight on through down there down and around into this baby where as you can see we are fully insulated 
that is where uh, my water pump is and all this business but it's all heat taped wrapped up insulated heating pad big ass bulb and back here on the other side of the bulb I did that on purpose um, that is my thermostat that's the other end of my thermostat the only area that I have concerns with now still is on the other side of this we have a 90 so there's about a two foot line of pipe PVC pipe that is heat taped and insulated and some of this heat can escape into here I can already feel it's about God knows how much colder over on this side but that is my only area of weakness but I can't really get to it and that's my gas tank right there uh yeah so that's that believe it or not that thing can go all night so it'll get me through the night then I gotta start my engine and then plug it in that way if it's below freezing but I monitor that all with a two-part thermostat from Accurite ding says the bell from Accurite and that keeps me monitoring both the inside temperature and the outside temperature I got a uh, two-part thermostat the other part is underneath and that way I could see if the temperature drops below freezing or and I'll watch the weather it's gonna drop below freezing for the night I can just flip that switch on so it's not running the whole time and I'll know when to use it and when to not use it I wanted one that would beep when you're getting close to but whatever I can feel when it's outside you're pretty doesn't take a lot of brains to figure out when you're getting close to freezing temperatures so it's called the Accure Right so it's both accurate and right except that they can't spell either one of those words also, another thing I needed to do, anyone from the Midwest uh, might have at one point in their life did the dirty deed inside an automobile. And what you do is when you come out of that sort of disgusting funk where you're like, dude, I can't believe she let me do that to her, you look up at the windows and you see them just covered in steam. That's because you were all breathing all heavy, <sighs> like all crazy like. And you notice the windows all steamy and gross. And this is an RV, and one thing I'm keenly becoming keenly aware of this was not designed for full-time living but I'm making it happen uh, yeah so what I had to do because I noticed a lot of the headliners on the uh, inside of the cabinets were all gross and I thought partly some of it I did have a leak and some of it I didn't a lot of it was this moisture getting in here and it can't get back out so what I did is I installed these kind of silly things and just as a test, I installed it in some and not in the other. And this is dry. This is as dry as here. But on this guy, where there is not one, that's still mildly damp. And that's from my, from the inside of my body. That's the steam I'm letting off. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in, put one of those in all the cabinets just to let air flow through everything. Again, it doesn't look pretty, but I painted it brownie brown town so it kind of matches a little bit and because I'm a classy dude I like to spray paint my screw heads so they'll match the covers will you look at that isn't that pretty oh Merry Christmas motherfucker how do you like that that's RV style Christmas tree thank you thank you mom this is my good I got I can sit down here by the fireplace by the Christmas tree waiting for Santa's silly ass to come bring me some gifts I've been a good boy this year so I'm gonna get some shit all right I know uh, it's taken me forever to get this video out and I've promised some big epic winterization video and this has hardly been it uh, however those are the few things that I've done so far so good hopefully they're helpful to you uh, Just Peg and everyone else who's watching. I should have cussed less in this Just Peg because I know you don't like my dirty potty mouth. But I am, I am who I am, Miss Peg. But I do. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to improve as a person and grow. And in order to do that, I need to not freeze to death. If I'm dead, then I can't do it. So hopefully these little things will do the trick. I'll keep you guys posted on which one's working the best. So far, I'm pretty pleased with the little buddy, the heat tape, 
which was a bit of a struggle and it really shouldn't have been that big a deal. Uh, the factory furnace is kind of crap. I mean it heats it up but it's not very efficient. The Eden Pure electric heater also decent, sucks power. Little DC heaters I got from Rural King. Total pieces of dog shit. Don't waste your 12 to $15 on those. And the Reflectex. Not cheap stuff, but makes a huge difference. Huge difference, bro. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions about anything that you've seen today, or just questions in general about life, or anything like that, uh, just go ahead and hit it below. And subscribe, maybe. Or not. I don't care. Anyway, thank you guys, and peace be with you.